Hello, my beautiful people. Here I am with a special cosmic climate for Mars retrograde in Gemini. And as I'm recording this on October 28th, we are a couple days before Mars stations for the retrograde cycle, which is going to happen on October 30th. We are fully in eclipse season. I'm not sure if you all are feeling it, but I am feeling it. I've had my own eclipse experience and it's been quite a time already. And so I hope that you all are hanging in there. I am feeling a bit better as far as my cold. It didn't really get that bad. It was just like a lot of congestion and I was really pretty tired, I would say. But other than that, I am doing well. I hope you all are doing well also. So as I sat down to record this, or right before I noticed my mom, she watches the news like constantly, it's always on. And some of you do know, some of you don't know that I am from Washington, D.C., which is the capital of the United States, if you're an international listener. Um, but I was born there, grew up most of my life in Maryland, like on the outskirts of the city, but basically in and out. Once I graduated high school, I quickly move back to the city on my own or stay with friends. And so I am so used to the political atmosphere. And it's really interesting that I want to say I chose this time to come back home and to stay here for a little bit, um, but I didn't really choose. I felt guided, um, which this is already an interesting autumn and Halloween time or Samhain time, which is season because I feel a little displaced in the sense of not my normal witchy self and being around my familiar because my cat's still in New York and just like, I'm just not around, like, you know, I'm not in the vibe that I'm usually in, but I'm grateful for where I am at the moment. And I feel that this is all significant for one reason or another. And so with that said, again, as I sat down to record this or right when I came in the room or right before I came in the room, my mom was watching the news and I overheard that someone um, broke into one of the senators, um, Nancy Pelosi, 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 Pelosi. I should know this, right? I know who she is. I don't remember if she's a senator or what, like I, I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyways, someone broke into her house. I believe that she, one of her houses in Florida and basically attacked her husband with a hammer and the, her husband is in the hospital and they did get the person that was, um, that was, um, responsible for this. <laughs> And I am just in awe that this is actually happening and this is just the rage and the division, the separation, the frustration, the anger within everyone, right? Within all aspects of this experience here, within like the political scene in the United States, within like the separation, the different sides, the different extremes, and everyone feels that their their beliefs are the belief or like everyone feels a sense of justification and justified in their their feelings, which everyone is justified in their feelings, but the actions that result from one's feeling, from one's anger, from one's frustration is really important to reflect upon like what's going on. That's an important theme that's going to be for Mars retrograde cycle, for any Mars retrograde cycle. We're reflecting on our actions, right? But when we think about Mars and Gemini, there's already this um, almost like a battle of the different perspectives. Gemini is the many different ideas, many perspectives. It's opposite sign of Sagittarius correlates to the one perspective, the one truth. There's only one way. So there's this like opposing energy here. Um, but first, you know, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna walk us through this whole timeline of Mars, Mars's uh, cycle, synodic cycle, um, which is Mars's meeting with the sun, which begins the Mars cycle, essentially from we'll talk about that. But similar to when I talk about Venus's cycle mars has its own unique cycle in reference to when it meets with the sun and so this is really that was really really significant because we are in a point where we are being guided to do things differently to learn how to 
channel, I feel, and channel our, our different, our, our emotions, our rage, our anger, because it is a useful emotion. That is an indication that when you are angry, frustrated, that is an indication that you feel on some, ex on some level dis that you are disempowered, right? It doesn't matter which side you're on, right? You feel that disempowerment. And so you will, or people tend to act on that anger or feeling. And when you're in that vibration and you act on that pure rage and anger, the action or the result of that action may be a bit distorted because that is not the most productive way to act on that emotion, right? We want to channel that. We want to really, um, this is, is, this is really a hard, a hard, um, so I guess I can just give my own personal way of how I deal with frustration and anger. I feel that my, and you can look to your Mars placement, right? Cause that'll give you an idea of how that might come up for you of the needing to separate this strong desire for independence and freedom, um, on whatever level, you know, where, whatever on any, in any area of your life is what I'm trying to say. And for me, Mars is in Pisces. So I automatically default to peace. I automatically will kind of almost disempower myself in a sense of like, I can feel everyone's everything. So if I am in a situation where, you know, I feel disempowered, I can always tap into that person's energy. And I'm like, well, they're going through this, this, and that, or they mean this, this, and that. And, you know, I understand where they're coming from. And, and so, and sometimes it can be um, not the best thing because I will discredit my own frustrations. Um, but the goal is to like release it in a way or transmute that anger in something that is creative, like find that moment where you can express that dynamic energy and then by the expressing that, you come to a space of peace so that you can approach what is confrontational to you, what's making you feel disempowered, and make the necessary actions to resolve that. And what came to mind is just like, for me specifically, is like dancing. Um, that is one of the ways, like my Mars and Pisces, I like grew up the first, my... Um, between ages eight and 16, I would say I was like really into dancing. I wanted to go to school and be a professional dancer. And so that was my way of just like expressing any like tension within my body and just any frustration. It was like being in that mode. And then while that doesn't always get rid of what I felt frustrated about, I can then be at peace within myself and then approach that in the right perspective or that just with a clarity of mind. So I feel like that's going to be really significant to this Mars retrograde, but I actually have a few slides that I'm going to share with you all that I just want to walk us through this Mars cycle that actually began when Mars had its Kazemi moment with the sun back in 2021. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here with everyone. Okay, let's go in present mode as soon as I move myself. All right, here we are, and let me just move myself. Okay, oh, I'm way ahead. <laughs> I'm on the last slide here. All right, so going to the first slide. This is, again, Mars synodic cycle. And what I mean by synodic cycle or what the word synodic means is meeting. And we tend to um, think about the synodic cycle when we're looking at it in this astrological perspective of basically the meeting of Mars and sun or the meeting of the individual planets with the sun. And so it'll be from that conjunction to the next conjunction is what is significant. And really it's a Mars earth sun cycle right because we're observing that and we're connecting to that and relating to that from our position here on earth and so this is essentially the timeline from kazimi to kazimi um that is significant to this um whole mars cycle in the retrograde and what that speaks of okay so if you see here 
on October 17th of 2021, which is a little over a year ago, Mars had, Kaze had a Kazemi in Libra. And this was at 14 degrees. And essentially, this is the beginning of this whole entire cycle, right? So that Mars Kazemi is essentially Mars being in the heart of the sun, in the case, energetically, obviously. Um, so Mars conjunct the sun in Libra. And as I was saying before, the air signs are so significant. The message of communication, of connection, of networking, of just the breath in a sense, like being able to take those moments of breath, really understanding that that breath essentially gives life as well and sustains life. And just the, the element of air really, this is such a really auspicious time where we are in, at this point in time <laughs> to connect with the element of air, getting to know that a bit deeper. And so this cycle, again, starts with that Mars Kazemi, which we'll talk about um, in the next slide. And then you see here we had the pre-shadow. So the pre-shadow is essentially when Mars enters the territory of when it will retrograde um, or that's going to be revisited as it retrogrades. So that happened on September 3rd of 2022. Then we have Mars square Neptune. Um, retrograde, that Mars square Neptune, that connection, that aspect is really significant to the Mars retrograde cycle. It is the dominating underlying energy of this retrograde cycle. And you here, you see, we have all the days for Mars stationing retrograde. Again, there's one, two, three aspects, three squares between Mars and Neptune. So that is very significant. One square before Mars goes retrograde, the next one is when Mars is retrograde, and the next one is when Mars, post-Mars retrograde cycle, and it's, you know, coming back for that final connection. And then we have the post-shadow period. Um, we have, and then this is when Mars enters Cancer. So, whew, finally, <laughs> I should have put in here when Mars entered um, uh, Gemini, and I believe it was in August um, sometime. I guess it doesn't necessarily... Um, so yeah, August 20th of 2022 was when Mars entered, um, entered Gemini. So it's going to be in Gemini from August of this year until March, the end of March next year. So that's a really long time. Mars usually stays in a sign for about two months. Okay. And so then finally that next Kazemi, the next cycle starts November 17th, 2023, Mars and Scorpio. That is going to be powerful. Um, and that feels like Mars coming home, Mars starting a new beginning. Really like this, this whole Mars synodic cycle that we're going to talk a bit about today, or I'm going to talk a bit about today, is almost like preparation for Mars to really have that full new beginning and its own energy, its own home or dwelling place of Scorpio, right? That ultimate power, that ultimate transformation and so forth. So this is a really significant synodic cycle. All right. So first I want to just revisit the planetary virtue of Mars. And this is from, this is just one of the little, um, an image from the easing that I have um, created for the different, for the planets, their virtues, their dignity. And you can get that for free by signing up for my email list. And the link is below um, in the caption of this video. But here, the pure virtue of Mars, from my perspective, I like to keep it, I try to keep it simple and only give like a couple um, virtues or qualities or intentions. But for Mars, it is to energize and to separate. Traditionally, Mars is considered to be the god of war and passion. And we see here just its, its dignity. It's a masculine energy, for so very expressive, as we know. Um, it's domicile, meaning its home sign is Aries and Scorpio. It is in detriment in Libra and Taurus, meaning that it's in exile. It's far away from its home. It has a lack of resources when it's in Libra and Taurus. It's exalted in Capricorn, meaning that it's at its highest vibration or it's expressing its virtue at its highest vibration. And I like what Rick Levine says. He says that um, Mars is Mars and Aries is really good at starting things. Um, 
not necessarily finishing, but when it's in Capricorn, it actually starts it and finishes it. Like it has that determination. It has that discipline to follow through and to complete whatever it initiated. And then it's fall, Mars's fall is in Cancer. And we think about um, Cancer's energy as the nurturer, as wanting to keep everything cozy. Um, and there's an element of protection with Cancer, but cancer is very emotional. Cancer it moves through all the moods, all the phases, which is great, but it can be, um, it could just be a catalyst for Mars or kind of like, you know, it's just a very, Mars is already very passionate. So then when you throw in the factor of like all the different moods and emotions, it can get a bit volatile, I believe. Okay. So there's that essence there where it's like, it's, it needs that groundedness in a sense to, in order to. Um, at least cancer needs a, a grounded um, foundation or like some sort of almost like checks and balances um, as it flows through the different emotions. So with it in Mars, Mars is already ready to like, it already has like all this passion and just fire and energy within its within itself. So putting it, adding it in with cancer that just gets like a bit out of control. Um, and of course, this is like, it's not as black and white as that, but this is just traditionally speaking in that pure essence. And then it's joy where Mars rejoices as far as the houses, the 12 houses or the 12 places is the sixth house. The sixth house is the place of misfortune or bad fortune. It's a place of, and that's traditionally speaking. So this is like, since that particular house is essentially out of the blind spot or it's in a blind spot to the native, which is represented by the first house, right? So it doesn't make a direct aspect to the first house, to the ascendant. Therefore, this is a place where things can happen that might be, um, you know, um, yeah, it can, things can happen to the person or the physical body that aren't fortunate, essentially. And there's a reason, more of an in-depth reason for that that maybe I will share in a different video if y'all are interested, but um, take my word for it. <laughs> it, it, it. Mars rejoices in this place because it is one, a malefic that is more strong, is stronger at night in the nighttime, but then also it is um, a place in where it, it has that strength, that um, passion, that inspiration to, move or to yeah to move through um the misfortune or just like fight its way past like the the pain almost or the um the limitations of the physical body or just what the day-to-day -day grind might be right it has that energy it has that um instinctual drive if that makes sense I really hope that makes sense um all right so moving forward now let's speak on Mars Kazemi and I might just move my camera down here so you guys can at least see me. All right, so Mars Kazemi and Libra, again, this is October 7, 2021. So I'm just gonna go through these important dates um, and events here for this Mars synodic cycle, including the retrograde cycle. So again, as I said, this Kazemi is the beginning of the synodic cycle and so forth. So therefore it sets the theme for this whole entire cycle the intention of mars what is mars seeking to learn right and so with mars and libra if you remember from the previous slide mars is in detriment mars is in exile and libra it is far away from its home and so let's find mars here so mars is where are we um oh right so it was in libra right so mars is down here in libra if you remember that its domicile is in Aries. This is its home. It is literally far away. It's in an opposition. So it has a lack of resources and it's very, right, it's in that Kazemi moment. So right on the sun and we have Mercury close by here. Okay. So this is all pretty like significant already thinking about Mars's retrograde cycle. But with Mars in Kazemi moment, it is in a place of high honor it is in a place of where it's receiving some kind of gift and some power and so that power is is um 
in reference to this Libra energy here. And so, but it's, it's almost like Mars has to, when Mars completes the entire cycle, that is when it will really fully gain that power or embody that, that gift within its essence. Right. And so here the themes uh, for this uh, Mars Kazemi and this whole cycle is to learn compromise and action and ideas um, also truth and fairness, inspiring action and adapting new perspectives and methods of engaging engagement, and most importantly, finding peace without war. And this is what's so resonant right now. And remember, this was almost a year ago and look at where we are now. And I'm just going to kind of jump ahead and mention that when Mars has its conjunction or I'm sorry, its opposition with the sun during its retrograde cycle, that is the halfway point of this whole cycle. That's the peak of the cycle and the peak of the retrograde cycle. And so it's interesting that we are now stepping into the retrograde cycle where things are really going to start begin to coming to a head as we revisit the um, just reflecting on our ways of compromising and within our action and compromising our action and ideas and how we act on truth and fairness, right? So we're going to get a little bit of the distorted aspects um, before we're able to really, we're, we're going to be guided to release that and transmute it. Um, but as you can see here, we have Mercury um, very close to the sun. So it is essentially combust. Um, but I think that Mercury, let's see, um, yeah, Mercury will actually have its Kazemi moment the next day where it's going to receive those that power and that gift of the Libra energy, that Libra vi vibration, which is the peace, the balance, the seeing the different perspectives and meeting in the middle, right? The attraction, the, the ability to network and engage in a diplomatic matter. That's really, really important. I will also say that this um, on this day, this was the day after the new moon in um, Libra, or I'm sorry, the day, wait, where are we? Yeah. So this is the day after, cause the moon at this point is in Scorpio, but the day before the Mars Kazemi, there was a new moon in Libra, which also was setting the vibe, just a whole new beginning. That Libra aspect, as we know, is really significant as well because of that shift of the Venus star point, right? So the whole shift within the collective, within our own individual experience is really powerful and significant when it comes to that Libra vibration of truth, fairness, equality, relationships, how we engage with one another, how we meet in the middle, right? How we compromise, how we even attract um, a very, um, like a high vibrational perspective, or it doesn't even necessarily, that's how I seek to attract things in, but it's it's bringing us to a point where we're contemplating how our outside world reflects what's going on internally, individually and collectively. It's a reflection of our own belief systems. And so this was all brewing, right? This all began October 7, 2021. See what else I have here. So we want to look at Venus really quickly. Venus is here in um, Sagittarius. Hmm. So it had just entered Sagittarius. And so this is really interesting for what comes later um, in more um, of the present time and moving into the retrograde cycle where the Venus here in Sagittarius is, we're learning, we're stepping into new territory of what we are desiring to connect to, um, even with more so with belief systems, with perspectives, with again, possibly revisiting the one truth or the one connecting truth, because we all have some aspect of that truth within us, right? We all have, like, I feel that pretty much everyone at their core <laughs> wants to live their life in peace, wants to not be fucked with, not lied to and so forth. So it's like, it's like, we're all being guided to direct our focus on our common truth on just, and a lot of people will say love is the only thing that's true. So, I mean, it could even be that, but really finding peace without war is really, really important. Um, just looking at my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. 
Um, yeah. All right. So moving on to the next slide here. So next we have on October. Uh oh. I'm looking at this and I'm like, I like the chart says a different date than. Oh, okay. So I did make a mistake here. All right. So you guys, this should be October 12th, but you can refer to this chart here. So on October 12th, we had the first Mars square Neptune retrograde. And um, this is at between Gemini and Pisces at 23 degrees. As I said before, this is the dominating un dominant underlying energy of Mars retrograde in Gemini. So recall Neptune's virtue is to dissolve, dissolve boundaries and to reimagine. And by, re by dissolving boundaries and reimagining what is really real, what's possible, just the act in this will deepen one's connection to source energy, to the divine, to God, or that's a way to even help and assist that ability to move beyond the boundaries of limitation and to dream up a new reality. That is really important um, for this Mars retrograde cycle. And so being that this is a square, a square is a point of conflict between these two planets and these two um, archetypes of Gemini and Pisces. And I love with Gemini and Pisces, they both have, um, you know, the two, right? So there's the two lines, but they're connected in some form. So this, the Gemini is enclosed by the two lines above and below. And then Pisces is connected by the one line and in in horizontally. And this is so significant because there is a focus on connection, on having these two perspectives, again, coming together to connect and meet in the middle in some way. And so that's just symbolically even very important for what this whole cycle is about and with mars and gemini or just thinking about the pure essence of gemini gemini seeks connection right it wants to get all of the, the details to really identify and this is almost like a subconscious or unconscious intention of gemini it's wanting to see what is that missing link? What is the connection, right? I know my daughter has a full moon in Gemini and she's already very handsy and likes to take things apart. Like she took the humidifier apart and she like takes her like doll babies apart, right? And it's just like, she likes to undo things and then hopefully she'll start learning to put them back together. Like she's been trying a little bit, but um, like she likes to screw things off, screw things on. And I just see that as such a Gemini thing where it's like, how is this all connected? Let's like pull apart all the different pieces and see how, you know, see them all separately. And then how do we bring them back together? What's like, or, you know, if something's broken and this could be even on the Virgo side of, um, um, and this is like more so Mercury, right? That I'm thinking of, but on the Virgo side of, of um, Mercury's rulership, there's the ability to see what's not working, right? So again, pulling everything apart, looking at all the details to see what is missing, what's not working. So that is definitely a vibe of Gemini energy. And so we're kind of doing that with our actions and our ideas, basically how we act in our ideas. So during this retrograde cycle, we're going to be picking out all of the things, you know, everything's going to seem like it's breaking apart or we're seeing all of these different perspectives, ideas, connections, ways that people aren't connecting, all the distorted aspects and actions. And we're going to really um, learn what is not working or what's missing. And then this will even guide us to, I feel like what might potentially be missing is that connection that we all have or this new way of being this new reality right finding that core yeah that core connection that core truth that we can all come together and meet in the middle and have some sort of peaceful agreement in existence that coexistence so with mars square and neptune a retrograde essentially this is going to bring us to the edge of our perception of reality what's really real excuse me, what is possible? Okay, so next, I'm gonna try to zoom through these. Before I get into Mars Station Retrograde, at this point, 
um, beginning October, basically October 22nd of this year until May 4th of next year, Mars is actually out of bounds, which means that it is greater. Its declination is beyond the limits of the sun. So the limit of the sun basically is 23 degrees and 27 arc minutes above or below the ecliptic plane. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, and so the planets, some of the planets, primarily, I don't think Jupiter and Saturn do it often, but I know obviously Mercury, Venus, Mars, um, this is all from our perspective, right? This is all Earth, Sun, planet. Um, these planets tend to go above or below that. And so when they are out of bounds, and in this case, Mars will be out of bounds north of the um, 23 point. 23 degrees, 27 arc minutes. Um, and so it basically means that it's out of control. It's <laughs> like, you can't tell Mars what to do. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure this is a good thing that like most of this time Mars is retrograde, right? So again, Mars went out of bounds on October 22nd and that was the day of Venus Kazemi. So interesting there. Um, all right. So I just wanted to mention that, but here we are, Mars stations retrograde in Gemini, 25 degrees, October 30th. And so here is the main, um, kind of, again, the uh, underlying energy of this Mars retrograde, but it's, it's basically what I was saying before is, um, if we go back to that Mars Kazemi, where we had that focus of um, truth and equality and finding peace without war and finding balance within our relationships and so forth and how we act on our ideas and how we connect, right? The Mars retrograde cycle is putting us in review of our past engagements, of all of those different elements in what's not working, what's working, what's distorted, what seems, you know, unbelievable or not possible, you know, what are intentions there? Um, even though, yes, we're in Mars, re Mars retrograde is in Gemini, it's still bringing in a, that, that Mars Kazemi and Libra elements. Gemini is more so allowing us to, again, look at the small details or look at all the details, look at like the methods of connection, the methods of engagement, our ideas about how we can move forward, how we can engage, how, how we can find peace the idea and perspective of how we act on our desires, on our passions, on our instincts, right? And so again, with the Mars square Neptune, um, there is that underlying theme of it, things at this time might seem a little hazy. They might be really unclear. We might have some things coming through that's really an illusion. It's not true. Or even things of the past may have been an illusion. What's really true? So Neptune, as always, has us questioning our reality. Jupiter, if you see, so Neptune is here in Pisces. Jupiter is over here, um, seven degrees away from Neptune. So it just entered um, back into Pisces. It's retrograde. But Jupiter has a lot to do or correlates to comprehension, right? And this aspect of comprehension is what will lead to expansion in consciousness in a sense. Um, that level of comprehension will either lead to or initiate our perspectives changing. Um, or, you know, the comprehension could be a result of our perspectives changing. So during the retrograde cycle, Again, there might be some blurring of boundary bound within the boundaries of the mind. Again, with these perspectives, these new levels, this level of reality, how do we really move past the limitations, right? Or what, again, what's really real? And then we want to um, take a look at Mercury since Mars is retrograde in Gemini. So we'll see um, how this is um, being managed essentially with the ruler of, of Gemini. So Mercury is over here in Scorpio, very close to the sun. So it's combust. So it's not super helpful um, because it's being overpowered by the sun in Scorpio. Um, and yeah, so we have the sun, we have Venus. So what's really going on here? Venus is in Scorpio. She just had her dawning moment, her rebirth essentially at, at that, at that Kazemi moment in Libra. Now she's in Scorpio where she is in exile. She is far away from home. She lacks the resources. Even though she just gained this power and these gifts, 
she's like kind of taking that and going even deeper into the underworld, going even deeper into revisiting her trauma, that those resources and powers that she was gifted during that Kasimi moment is essentially helping her to move through and unearth the trauma that's kind of been there and really influencing, you know, her, or in this case, us, um, we, it, it could be something that like, yeah, we knew we were conscious of this trauma, but we didn't really like approach it on a deep, deep level. Now that's happening. And it can also be trauma that was dormant, that was happening unconsciously. Um, and so we're also finding that pain point, And this is Mercury coming through to, again, what is not working here? What's the missing link? Or what is that one connection here that one, you know, the one thing I can kind of put in there to that didn't sound right, but <laughs> to kind of get things working to heal this process, basically, we're finding the pain point. Um, and so this is um, also this um, <clears throat> has an element to do with the Mars retrograde cycle. All right. So the next important um, event is again, this is the second Mars retrograde square Neptune retrograde. So both planets are retrograde at this point. And at this time, this is guidance towards releasing what transpired during during eclipse season in order to begin to see things clearly. So at this point, this is in November, November 19th, we've already had the two eclipses. This is... Um, we haven't had since, yeah, the sun is still in Scorpio. So this is, um, we're still in Scorpio season at this point. So we haven't had that new moon in Sagittarius. So we're still at this point in the lunar cycle of Scorpio, right? So even though we're out of the eclipse window, we're still in that veil, <laughs> in that area of eclipses. So we're going to be at this point releasing whatever was unearthed, whatever came up releasing that, integrating that, working through it. And as we're doing this, we will begin to see things more clear. Um, let's see. And at this time, where are we? Mercury and Venus in opposition. Oh, yes. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> so Mars is over here, of course, in Gemini. And then we have Venus and Mercury in Sagittarius. So they are by sign in opposition to Mars, right? And so Mercury and Venus, Venus, again, in control or in charge of engagements, of engaging in peace, of just setting the vibe right, of really allowing us or assisting us with worthiness, with really um, our holding boundaries within our values and how we seek to engage and connect. And the Mercury is also there to assist with communications, with ideas being shared, with putting the multiple perspectives um, there. And as we know, Sagittarius is an op um, is a, an optimistic sign. And so there's this ability to, um, I feel like with Mercury and Venus, they're going to assist in projecting the new perspective, the new idea. When I was making notes on this, it made me think about the hanged man in um, tarot, if you're familiar. So just like flipping that perspective, taking a moment to um, be in a state of peace or just kind of silent, like, I don't want to say silencing the mind, but in a meditative state is probably more like it. Um, so that is what I'm picking up here. Next, Mars retrograde opposite the sun. So this is the peak of Mars retrograde cycle. This is also the peak of the Mars synodic cycle, synodic, I said synodic, synodic cycle. So this is the halfway point of the whole cycle and of Mars retrograde. So really powerful time, right? Um, and so here you see Mars up here um, and then the sun here <clears throat> with Venus. And so the moon is also here with, with Mars. What's really cool about this is that when we had the first, um, when was it? Um, sun. Yeah, so during the Kazemi, obviously Mars and the sun were conjoined. And 
actually I'm gonna hold my thought there. This is gonna be for the end, but let's come back to this. Sorry for the confusion. Um, but so we have Mars can join the moon up here in Gemini. So this is the sun essentially, because this is the, um, this is my notes here. Okay. So this is the day after the full moon in Gemini. So at this point, which is December 8th, I didn't put the date on here, but it's December 8th, 2022, this is Sagittarius season and we're having that we just had a full moon in Gemini. And so with the moon here with Mars, the sun in opposition, the sun is illuminating this Gemini aspect here. So it is illuminating what's been in the dark this whole time as far as the Gemini Mars retrograde as far as our different ideas and possibly what's been missing, right? That missing link. It's it, We have like this lantern, the bright moon reflecting the divine intelligence of the sun, the sun in Sagittarius, which the sun or Sagittarius is represented by the bow, right? Um, it is the archer. So it's literally, it seems like directing a straight <laughs> light at like, oh, here it is, right? So there's illumination of what was in the dark. And then we have the sun down here that is in conjunction to Venus by a, a big orb by what is that like 11 degrees, right? Um, so conjoined by sign, right, is what we would say. But it is allowing, again, us gaining direction and following the divine light. So it's literally being like, hey, let's follow this divine light. I'm pointing my arrow this way. So we might gather some sense of... Um, clarity, some sense of divine intelligence and insight when it comes to this opposition point. Um, and then at this point, I will also say that um, Jupiter is in direct motion, which is significant. One, it's it's still in Pisces. So it's really strong in that sense. Um, and again, it's Pisces is, it just feels like because Neptune's there, so that's also a significant placement, of, again, of just everything coming together in one. And Pisces, to me, is essentially source in the chart. It is God. It is that essence or vibration of that source energy, that divine light within all things and how it's all connected. And it's the, the last sign of the zodiac, so it also has that energy, too, of everything coming to, together um, to, into completion. And so Jupiter is also the ruler of Sagittarius. So there's some strong energy here with Jupiter um, having management over this uh, Sagittarius particular part of the chart and the opposition. So that's important. And it's opposing um, at 16 <clears throat> degrees. All right. So Mars stations direct in Gemini at eight degrees. This is on January 12th of 2023. And here we are. And so this is post Mercury retrograde Kazemi and Capricorn. So at this point, this is January of 2023. So we've started the new year and uh, Mercury has had, um, it's in its retrograde cycle. You can see it's red here. And so it just had its Kazemi moment. So if you remember, especially with Mercury, especially with Mercury retrograde, that Kazemi is such a powerful alignment of good fortune and op optimistic energy because it's close proximity of the sun. And this is what the ancients believed. And so this is really a moment of enlightenment, an aha moment um, for Mercury. And Mercury and Capricorn, there is Capricorn really wants to kind of... Um, get things in a safe space to create some sort of structure and routine and create the method for everything to function well. And so with Mercury having its aha moment here, its point of enlightenment, even though it's still, it's in deep reflection mode, which can be good for Mercury because Mercury is always moving and going and flowing. And so for Mercury to be moving slower at a state of, um, at its, its Mercury uh, retrograde Kazemi, um, and this is the, this, so this, the Kazemi was the day before Mars stations direct. So it's still in that, um, energy or that vibration. And so what came through here is that this is, uh, the beginning, 
um, and contemplating creating structure around the new ideas, perspectives, and connections, right? And so this is when Mars, Mars stations direct. So this is the end of Mars retrograde cycle. And so it's essentially standing here, standing still, and it just witnessed <clears throat> Mercury go through that Kazemi, have that Kazemi moment, which Mercury is managing what's going on here in Mars. So it's just a beautiful connection. And so finally, I'll share this last significant point, um, or at least the chart. And so now this on March 14, 2023, this is uh, Mars is already uh, this. So I'm sorry, this should be Mars, not retrograde, um, square Neptune, not retrograde. <laughs> Um, and let me make sure. Yeah, it's still 25 degrees, but both planets are direct. Okay. And this is a point in which everything comes full circle of that whole underlying theme of Mars retrograde cycle and just Mars square Neptune, where new perspectives are ready to become reality. So this is when we may feel really inspired to act around this time. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, we've been through this whole thing. I felt confused. I've been taking my time and acting. I've been go or going back and forth because with Gemini, it can be like all over the place. It's like, no, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And it's like getting bored quickly, especially with Mars, but we've had to reflect and revisit all the different ideas, perspectives, realities, whatever's coming up, relationships. And now at this point in March, this is the time where it's like, okay, there's clarity. Now I can really begin to believe and really begin to approach and act on these new perspectives and bring them into reality, especially um, just with having that, um, a couple months ago, having that Kazemi moment in Capricorn with Mercury retrograde we were more than likely gaining some ideas and methods of how we can move forward. So in between that time of Mars stationing direct and to this point where Mars has its third and final square with Neptune, that is the point in which, okay, now we've created this plan and we can move forward. All right. So then again, Mars will move into Cancer on um, March 25th right? So about 11 days after this. And so that is what I have to share with you all here as far as these slides. So what's the best way to approach or navigate this energy of Mars retrograde um, and Mars and Gemini? And essentially, I would say, and I'm sure this is what you've been hearing myself say, other astrologers, but this is not the time to really act fully on something. Um, this is the time where we're really just thinking things through. So you might naturally just feel hesitant to act on something. And that is really what is in natural flow right now is to take your time and be very discerning of, you know, your desires. I feel at this point, like writing your desires down at this time and then re revisiting, reviewing them as we move through this retrograde cycle and also just anything that comes to mind as far as your desires or any ideas, different perspectives, this is just a really powerful time to journal so that as these, these important dates come up, you're able to reflect back and see, oh, okay, like this is what I was really inspired to, um, I felt inspired to do or felt called to um, revisit this thing or reach out to this person or, you know, um, approach this new idea, just having everything written out and taking small steps, small, slow steps is, is what feels really, really good. Also being open to infinite possibilities. Like it makes me think of the two of pentacles in tarot when the person is juggling the, the pentacles, right? One, there's a pentacle in each hand and it's connected by the infinity symbol, which again, this could be like, this can be like, oh, I don't know which one to do. Or it could be like, I'm managing my time effectively so I can do both things. And there's infinite possibilities of how these can connect and work together. And so just opening the mind or allowing yourself to open the mind and just really be um, open to what can, what might come through for you and what is possible. So this is probably a long one. I don't even, even know what time I started, 
But <clears throat> thank you all for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope it all made sense and came together and resonated. Thank you all for watching this till the end if you made it. So um, please like this video, share it, and comment below if you enjoy the content or if you have any exciting experience come through down the line. I would love to hear about that and connect with you. And again, I will connect here soon.